Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Alex Bainbridge here from Tor CMS, and in the next hour, uh, we're going to just show you around some of the uh, key parts of the system, and and how you can set it up to run your local Tor business. It's a system now used by hundreds of local Tor companies, and people use it really for three key things. Uh, one, to uh, manage their websites, websites and um, enable you to take bookings online. That's a very common use of Tor CMS. The secondly, people use Tor CMS as their reservation system, meaning that we have, for those companies that use Tor CMS as a web system, we have 100% of people's bookings and do all of the operational reports such as who's arriving this week and um, where you're picking people up for from, from various different things. And then there's the third main use of Tor CMS, which is a distribution platform, and that means that you can get your products to appear on third party travel websites and control that information. Uh, we'll come on to that a little bit later. So that when you, for example, change availability because you've received the booking or it's no longer on sale or you add a new date then those dates will change on your own website change to where your staff are managing those dates and and change to the um, change on, on 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 leading online travel websites as well when you first log into Tor CMS this is what you're faced with quite a lot of settings and I'm just going to come in here and create a tour so let's create a tour called Thursday in July, just July test tour. So we now have a tour. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to look at some of the fields that we have that we store against the tour. So I just clicked on descriptions and images. So we have commercial priority, which can be useful for ordering when you have multiple tours on a page. Um, we can list the country, we can do geocodes, and we store the geocodes for things like the start point, the end point. If you're a bus store, we can do midpoints, which is where you can get on and off the bus, or you want to make a nice itinerary map, we can do that as well. We have the tour types, kind of other standard information that you can have a look at in your own time. So we collect a lot of standard information about the tours, and then we have things like descriptions. Now, we have uh, all the fields that you would expect to need if you're a local tour operator. Um, we tend to have different lengths of field for the same, what, you, what may look like the same question. And that is because some people are building mobile apps and some people are building websites. And therefore, if you have a, if you have a tour name that's very long, that won't look so great on a mobile app. So we try to enable you here to have um, long names that can get used on your website and shorter names that can be used in apps and on, and on mobile versions of your website, for example. We hold some descriptions, text descriptions. Um, all of these text descriptions can be in multiple languages. So if you're trading in English and French and Spanish, then for the Tor CMS can hold different versions of the same text. And when a customer books in Spanish, they will uh, see your Spanish descriptions. And when they book in English, they will see your English descriptions. Uh, and we also have a lot of what we call non-mandatory descriptions. And these are other fields that you can use um, if you wish to depending on how your business is set up. So we have some mandatory fields and some non-mandatory fields. We also do enable you to create custom fields as well if you want. Um, so if you really want to create something exactly to your need, then you can do that. So we have, a, so we have descriptions, we have images. I'm going to also show you some of the settings that we have that we can control the sales of, the book, of, the, of that tour. So one of the things that you'll find with Tor CMS is that we do have a lot of strength and a lot of capability. Now, that can be 
a little bit off-putting to begin with. You think, gosh, what are all these switches going to do? But that's because we run a lot of people's businesses, and when it when it turns out that people actually want to do certain things in certain ways, then you need those switches. Um, and that is one difference between us and, and, and other kind of companies in the same space as us, is that people use Tor CMS to, to power their business and therefore the complexity is necessary to help help do that. So let's have a look at the um, cutoffs. Let's have a look at some start times and cutoffs. So one of the things that you really want to do if you're selling datos and in fact, if you're selling multi-dators to an extent, but primarily if you're selling dators, one of the things you really want to do is stop taking bookings as late as possible. So if you remember a couple of years ago and you were a data company, you probably would have meant you probably would have said, Oh, I'm not going to take any travel agent or web bookings in the last 48 hours before the tour starts. And you'd say, well, anyone who's going to book those tours, they have to book via telephone, or they have to come and 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 come and meet us face to face. But now, um, and a good expectation for day tours would be that you sell maybe even up to two hours before the before the start time, oh, um, and and you know, and and in some cases, people have got down to half an hour. Now, Tor CMS enables you to do that, and the, one of the reasons why it enables you to do that is because all of your bookings are channeling through Tor CMS in some way. So they're either coming off your website, they're coming from travel agents, big online travel agents, or indeed into your business center. So because all of these different sources and channels are coming into your single uh, availability pot, you can be much more um, reassured that you can still take bookings at the last minute. So you can see here we can automatically cut off to stop taking bookings at a certain time or we can um, fix it to have a cut off in minutes, let's say 20 minutes before. So another thing that we can look at is booking sizes. Um, primarily Tor CMS is good for uh, when, when we're talking about day tours, uh, we can talk about multi-day in a minute. But when we talk about day tours, um, we if you let's see, you can use Tor CMS to run tours that have got very low capacity, or you can use Tor CMS to use to run tours that have got um, you know that you can take hundreds of people a day on. So we have a number of different configurations that you can go through to adjust how you wish Tor CMS to. In, uh, take bookings, and we have a couple of clever things. So just to give you a couple, a couple of examples of, of, of clever things you can do with, with Tor CMS, um, one is that you can um, take bookings of a, of a different size depending on how many days there are to go before the tour starts. So let's say you require four people to make a tour profitable to run. And if there were fewer than four people, you would cancel the tour, or maybe you'd run it at a loss. So if you've got no one booked on that tour at a couple of days to go, the chances are you don't really want to take another uh, a two-person booking, because it's better to not run the tour at all than to potentially put two people on it and run it at a loss. So we have a mechanism where you can take bookings at the last minute that are larger, and and will only run will only take a booking that meets your minimum requirements. But if that if that couple that two people turned up a month before and said, hey, I want to go on that tour, then of course you would accept it because um, you would have another month to find more people to go on that slot and make that tour run at a profit. So we have some yield management tools that work a bit like that. We also have some um, tools that enable you to share availability between different tours. So if you have a bus and that bus has got a, cap a capacity of 20 people, you can, and it doesn't matter, you might have three tours that use the same bus on the same day. Uh, with Tour CMS, any booking on any one of those tours 
will reduce the availability on the other tours. Uh, again, enabling you to automatically trade without having to, um, to, to worry about whether or not you're going to overbook. Uh, not many questions, everyone. You can ask questions if you want to keep the questions coming. Um, so let's have a look at some of these rates and rate types. Um, we support, we're very flexible in terms of how you could set up product types. Um, but we also have these, uh, what I'm showing you now is this me method where we, we have rates. Now a rate is like an adult, a child, senior, infant, whatever it happens to be. So here you can um, create some rates and once you have created a rate, can you see that? I'll just save that. Um, if we once we've got these rates, we can then when we get into dates and prices and we actually have a um, we have a, a departure date for that um, for that individual tour. Um, you can now see that we actually have prices for adults, child, and infants, meaning that you can describe. You can obviously have different prices, which is what's important. We also support uh, the capability of doing. Um, quantity-based pricing, which enables you to have different prices depending on the group size. So if you have a have it so that a uh, fourth person goes free, then then you could set that up in Tor CMS. We also uh, can use these capabilities to price by um, we have a we have a we have a slightly different product type called hotel product type, which enables you to um, do occupancy based pricing, um, which is sort of number of people in a room. Um, it's it's an interesting dilemma. There's kind of two different kinds of tour company who use tour CMS. There are those who are uh, more focused on the day tour, who of course don't have to worry about occupancy based pricing, and so therefore they're primarily using what I've just shown you on the screen, and then you have the second kind who are primarily uh, selling hotel-based tours and are therefore going to want to set up so that you can have different prices depending on how many rooms you've taken and how many people are in each of those rooms. And really, it's up to you how you how you choose to do that. I think um, um, I, I think you'll find that. Um, Occupancy-based pricing can get quite complicated, um, and 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 often you'll find that you 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 can get to the you can get to the same effect by using per-person pricing or group pricing on the regular departures functionality. So if we have a look and see what we're looking at here, so we you don't need to worry about this code. Forget about the code. If you don't want to put a code in, you don't have to. So we've got some prices, we've got some dates. Product note, you can put a little description on there. If you want to distinguish, if you want to distinguish one departure from another, you can put it in there. This quantity QPC, if you can just see that. That is uh, quotation provisional confirmed. So it's telling you, actually, that because we just put those dates in, it's telling you that there aren't any. Um, there's no one booked on there, obviously. Space is 20, so that's kind of a default. Um, we can change that on the setup, and that is that's Tor CMS telling you that it's calculated that there are 20 spaces left. Obviously, as bookings come in, those numbers go down. The auto status is open, showing that there's no reason why Tor CMS thinks that should be off sale, so they're on sale at the moment. But if you want to, you can just tick close, and you can adjust the um, you can manually close an individual date. You can also, if you want, just if you go, oh, actually I'm gonna slight I'm gonna change the bus on that one. I'm gonna have a slightly bigger bus. I'm just gonna check I'm just gonna um, add spaces. I've just done that and now I can see that I've got 30 spaces. So um, we can also create special offers. 
and if you ever if you want to know what a special offer looks like, I'll just show you. Uh, Torsift is one of our demonstration websites and takes product from all of the suppliers who are in Tor CMS. If you ever wanted to get to a situation where a product has got a public price as well with a with a strike through as well as a um I think I just saw that actually. Um, if you have a look at this Heineken experience, it says 18 euros with a strike through, and it says it's actually now 16 euro. We we achieve that by creating a special offer in the in this in this right hand column here. Um, so you can do that. So this the advantage of all these little individual departures, and you, there's a little there's a tool at the very bottom of the page. It says here one day tour activity generator. You don't have to go and create all your individual departures one by one because you'll be there forever. But the advantage of having departures is that it enables you to um, individually control and manage individual slots. But say you wanted to completely take an entire tour off sale and never to be shown to the public ever again, then you come to tour and you come to the status here and you just set it to private and that will take it off every single well that will take it off any of your web um, that will take it off any of your websites and, and take it out of any of your travel agents. But let's not do that because I'm about to make a booking. Um, so okay, so um, I'm now just going to make a very very quickly make a, a test booking. Now, of course, um, when you put this on your website, it will this will have your design, and you can have a look at um, various different websites. If you want to see some example websites, I'm just going to put them into the. Um, I'm just going to send you some links down the right hand side if you go and have a look on your um, the, the chat, I don't know if you can see that everyone um, <clears throat> so I've just sent you two examples into the chat on this uh, webinar uh, one of the examples is a day tour company and the other is a multi-day tour company um, all of both of those websites are 100% powered by Tor CMS, so that when you do a search on here on the Spanish website, or you do this holiday finder on the uh, walking tour company's website, then you all of that is powered and straight from Tor CMS. So I'm just going to do an example actually on this one, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh. Oh, about going to Greece. Everyone should go to Greece this week. All right. <clears throat> so I've just done a search on there. That and that has just come out of Tor CMS. So we all these little nice Greek tours. Greek. So that. Um, and likewise, if you go to here and go to um, Barcelona on this one, again, this information is coming out of Tor CMS. So those are two examples of uh, websites that are powered by Tor CMS, but they actually use the, uh, they've actually built using the Tor CMS API, which is something that we give to web developers. They have, um, certainly Julia Travel has, uses a, they've built their own booking engine from the Tor CMS, on top of the Tor CMS system, which is great. But what I'm going to show you here is a very quick, um, going back to the Tor CMS booking engine, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Um, this is the this is the off-the-shelf one, which you can customize a little bit. So if you don't have any uh, time to spend with web designers, then this is what you'll get. I'm just going to put in some rubbish data. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, and these are all integrated with your payment gateways. So um, we can integrate with a variety of different payment gateways to take money 
um, of your customers and obviously the money that is taken off your customer goes straight to your merchant account, it doesn't come to Tor CMS. We as Tor CMS are not a travel agent, you, you are a tour operator or a travel agent, we are not, we're a technology company, so the money always goes straight to you. So for day tours, um, people tend to pay 100% of the booking up front, and that's how it works, unless, uh, unless it's a travel agent sale. And but for multi-day, you might just be paying a deposit. So you might be paying 10%, 20% up front, and then paying the remainder um, subsequently, automatically. Now, CMS, for multi-day tours, Tor CMS can automate sending an email to the customer saying, hey, you still owe this amount of money. Um, please click on this link and, and make a payment. So let's just have a quick look at that. What have we done? How have we got to? Okay, booking reference ATA. As I said, this was a very simple. Um, don't know if you can see that. Not quite sure what you can see actually, but anyway, there we are. I think you can see that I just got to got to eighty. Right, going back to the back office a second. Just going to click on the booking jump at the top right hand corner. I type in eighty, and here we are. Here actually is the booking that we literally made a couple of minutes ago. So again, the customer details, we've got the name and address, um, we see the sale value, we can see who owes it, it can be owed by the customer or it can be owed by a travel agent depending on how you, how you, how you trade and obviously that's great. Over on the right hand side we can see it's booking reference 80, we can see who made it and when. Um, we have three different statuses of bookings, quotation, provisional, confirmed. Um, most day tour companies, you tend to have a fairly, um, it's either, hap the booking is either happening or it's not happening, so it's either um, confirmed or, or it's cancelled. Um, for multi-day, where you tend to be wanting to track more of a conversation between the customer and yourselves, then those statuses can be helpful because you might have customers, you might have several customers at quotation stage, and then you know that they've confirmed, um, etc., etc., etc. So that's all. Um, you know, we've got different statuses depending on how you want to do things. So if we come, to, if we scroll down a little bit, you can see on the screen um, a couple of little notes. These two notes, don't worry about them. They're just trying to tell you that. There wasn't a hotel pickup, but there could have been, and um, that we haven't received any money. So pay attention; we need to take some money on this. So if we have a look, we can see actually this product. We ended up putting uh, one adult and one child on, and it's 240 euros. So normally, if the um, yeah, so that's so that's what that does. Now at the bottom of the screen we have booking notes. Now you can store in the notes anything about the booking that you wish. So people use that to store any conversation that you've had with the customer. You can you can mark these notes to be only seen by your staff, um, or sometimes you can make it so that the customer might have it via email, for example. Um, so you can, st especially if you're tailor making a tour, or s then you can use the notes to track all the different changes in what the proposed trip will be. Um, we can also um, send templated emails about bookings, and I, I think I'll just come on to that um, slightly separately. I think the, um, the, the key thing, of course, is that we can send emails and create documents. So if you want to send automated emails to the customer, or you want to have a template that you can use that you gives you a basis, then you can do that. I'm just going to click on this link and see what it looks like. Here we are. So I'm saying, hey, here is um, here is I'm going to send it from this particular email address, and I'm going to send it to oh, which which of these email addresses should I send it to? I can also change the subject. I can insert a little bit of a um, I can insert some text, so I might have some templated text that I'm using, and I can edit 
type in what I like and edit it. And when I'm finished, I can um, send a message to the um, customer. Of course, attaching a document. So if you were if you're wanting to uh, create a document that goes to the customer, you can do that as well. And anything that TorCMS sends will um, be stored against the customer and the booking records so that you've got that. And that's, in, that's very useful if you've got multiple members of staff who are sending out quotes, for example, you can see exactly what they've been issuing. Uh, let's just have a look at some of the... I'm just going to channel manager email templates. I'm just going to have a sh show you... Um, so I'm talking through some of the automated emails that we can send. So we can send new booking emails, provisional booking, confirmed booking, that's pretty obvious what those do. We can send some chasers. So here's a quotation booking chaser. So if seven days after the booking has become a was was received, but if it's still a quotation and no one's done anything about it, you might send a nice little email to the customer saying, Hey, are you still interested in this tour? If you're not interested, that's fine, but if you are, great. So you can automate some nice chasers, can be useful. Again, you can change all of the form address, name, address, subject, the body. These can be nice CSS em designed emails, or you can just leave them pretty basic if you want. Uh, so we've got all these different chasers that you can send, payment acknowledgements, um, balance due soon, which is especially useful if it's a multi-day tour, you can say, hey, do you know, you, you know you've got to pay your balance soon? And again, Tor CMS calculates. If, if the customer doesn't owe a balance, they're not going to send the email. So you can set up all these nice things nice and automated. Um, you've got supply notifications, which enable you to, uh, if, you've got a, if you've got some subcontract suppliers, you can notify them automatically about new bookings if you want. Uh, Pre-trip emails. So we've got pre-trip one, two, three, four, five. We've got five different pre-trip emails. So if you wanted to create a really big sequence of, hey, you better go on your trip, or don't forget to bring a suntan cream or something, then you can create some um, a great sequence of uh, pre-trip uh, CRM type communications. We have a mid-trip email. You can say, well, actually, this is going to, we're going to send this. Again, this is only really good for multi-day. Uh, the pre-trip works for day tour and multi-day tours, but mid-trip is good for uh, multi-day. So if, they've, if they're doing a seven-day tour, people will check their email while they're traveling with you. Uh, so you could, you could send them a little mid-trip email saying, uh, well, saying whatever you want to say to them, really. And then, um, and then we have uh, post-trip emails, which tend to be used for things like, uh, oh, come and give us, if you like what we did, then come and give us a, a review, or go to TripAdvisor and give us a review, or, or whatever it might be, so you can send those. And we also have booking anniversary, and booking anniversary is incredibly helpful. Um, if, for example, you do an annual event, you might if you, this will send an email 11 months after they last made the booking. So if it's an annual event, this will um, remind them that they might, they might want to book again this year. Okay, so we can automate all sorts of emails. Um, we can receive bookings. So did, um, did you have a look at these kind of websites? I don't know. If you had a lot, if you do in your own time, do have a look at websites like Julia Travel and Max Adventure. Um, because they're all, as I said, they're all. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you can build um, at a, you know, mid budget, I would say. So not too expensive, uh, but not. But you would need a web designer who knows what they're doing, and web designers who know what they're doing can be, uh, you know, can be quite expensive. Let's be straightforward about that. Um, but we've got loads of companies who, from the very small to the very big. If you've really got a budget and uh, want to create a website that's very powerful, then of course you can um, take a look at something like uh, greyline.com, which shows you what you can achieve if you spend a lot of uh, time, very experienced web designers, uh, building something, then this shows you what you can build. 
Um, one of the things, I don't know if this is quite going to work on a um, webinar, but if you have a look, I don't know if, I have no idea if that's working on your webinar screen. I think it kind of is, but you can see that it's responsive and, and, and therefore easier to take mobile bookings. So you can have a look at that. That's easy to build. Right, so how are your questions coming on, everyone? You still asking me questions? I hope so. So let's have a look at. Um, so we talked a little bit about this, and this this is enabling you to, uh, as I said, you can put your tours in, your descriptions, you can take bookings online, you can take payments online, but you can also, as I said, um, use Tour CMS to manage your staff entered bookings. So if I just click on bookings. I come through to this section here. I can click on latest and I can see the last bookings that were made, quotes and provisionals, these are bookings that are out there with customers that are no longer that are not act, not quite confirmed yet. Arriving soon, I can see bookings that are coming soon. So I can search for bookings, I can um, quickly, very quickly see uh, bookings that are about to arrive, etc, etc, etc. One of the things you can do if you want to is email all of your existing bookings. So we look we looked just now about how to create an email around an, around an individual booking. Now again, that's that's quite helpful if you're a multi-date or company because you're probably caring about individual bookings a lot, and therefore you can uh, you, you're wanting to communicate about individual bookings. Whereas if you're dealing with a slightly higher volume of customers with multi with uh, day tours, then you really want to be able to email all of the customers at once. So here I can search and let's just um, let's just search and make a slightly uh, wider set of um, bookings. Oh, didn't, didn't, oh, it's still only got. Um, Okay, so, so this okay. So this is uh, this is a test account. So anyway, this has brought up two bookings. And let's say I wanted to email those two bookings. I click on here, and I can now enter a. I, I can enter a booking, and it, I can ent I can now email all of these customers and tell them about something. So for example, if you're having to cancel a tour or you're changing a pickup location, then you can search by people just taking those that particular tour and then send an email just to those people on that booking. Um, if you look at the very top of the screen, it actually asks you, is this relating to the transaction, the booking, or is this marketing? So if it's marketing, then we take into account whether or not they want marketing emails from you, because that's something that TorCMS asks you, asks them when the customer is booking. But if it's if it's transactional, i.e., you're telling someone about the booking itself, then you can disregard whether or not someone has given you permission to market to them because you're, it's not a marketing email; it's a transactional email, and therefore you can um, you can you can send them an email and tell them about, tell them what, tell them what the issue is or tell them what's going on. Again, every time we have one of these emails, you can see that we have a, have an ability to select who the email goes to. Normally, you would send it to the travel agent if the travel agent made the booking and the customer if the customer made the booking but there are situations where you might choose to send it send it to um, diff different types of people depending on what the email was about so for example a post trip email that asks people about feedback you might want to send to your customer if you're lucky enough to have your customer's email address even though the booking came from a travel agent Yeah. So the idea of sort of just sort of yeah, I mean, there's lots of things you can build on Tor CMS, and 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 that as I said, we have a kind of a full API that enables you to, oops, uh, enables you to um, build what you like. So if you're if you're a developer, you can adjust the data and and access your booking data and your customer data and your payment data and and and, and really build whatever you like. But we also have in the in the Tor CMS system, a lot of the lot of interesting tools 
that we think might be useful. And as one of them was a, an example I gave earlier was the anniversary email, where you know we think that you may like to send an email saying, "Hey, do you want to book? Do you want to book this thing again this year?" And that's very, as I said, that's mainly helpful though for uh, people who are doing certain events that are always the same time every year. Then that's a good email to send. Um, again, depends what kind of destination you're in, what kind of tours you have. Um, depending on what's going to work for you. Um, so you don't necessarily need to use that, it might not be right for you. Some people work in destinations where the customer is only, only going to come to you once in a lifetime. Well, that's not going to be a very particularly helpful email then, so don't use it. But uh, other people have, have uses for it, so that's great. Okay, so and one thing I haven't really talked about yet is working with travel agents. Um, so perhaps I'll spend a few minutes talking about travel agents now. So when you work with travel agents, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Um, firstly, if you become the travel agent manager, you can see here a list of travel agents in your account. Now we tend to work with, let's say, three or four different primary types of travel agent. So the first will be what we would describe as a retail travel agent. And a retail travel agent will be one where if they don't pay you, you don't give them a booking. Um, so, and because you, you know, you're not quite sure if you're ever going to get paid from them. So they're a little, you act with them just like you would act with a consumer in that you pay, you get a booking. You don't pay, you don't get a booking. So that's what a retail travel agent is, and if they're on 10% uh, commission, then when they come to pay and it's a 100 euro product, then they will only pay 90 euros. So that's how a retail travel agent works. And then we have a second sort of top level type of travel agent, which is what we call a trusted travel agent. And these are travel agents who can put bookings into your Tor CMS account but they don't have to pay. So the reason why they're not paying you at the moment of putting the booking in is because you trust them enough that they will pay you every month on invoice or they'll just pay you automatically uh, depending on how they work. Um, so for example, if you were dealing and selling to TripAdvisor or Viator, then that would be a trusted travel agent because at the time that you receive the booking, you do not, um, you do not have to, you're not receiving any money at that instant in, of time. And then we have a third kind of travel agent, which is really an affiliate, and an affiliate is someone who is probably not necessarily a fully authorized travel agent, but they might be running a, a regional website and they can feature on their website something that we call widgets and I'll just put this link into the um, webinar chat thing if you can see it there. Now a widget, um, you see there's a little bit of, I don't know, I don't know quite how many of you guys are, are coders but as you can see here I've just highlighted a little bit of, and that's called JavaScript now, if you put that into a web page, it actually puts these two tours, and you can try it if you want. You can copy and paste that JavaScript and put it into your own web page if you want to see what happens. Um, it will put into the web page these images, des descriptions, prices, etc. We have different versions of it, and um, <clears throat> so you can see this one here is a bit more compact. And it's also got a navigator in it, so you can navigate between different ones. And we also have some smaller versions so that you can put down the sidebar of a blog, for example. And you can make them geographic. So here are loads of tours near a certain point. I think that point is in um, Scotland somewhere. And also, they work in all the languages that Tor CMS supports. So, um, um, so if you can see this one here, this this is all in uh, Dutch, I think. Um, <clears throat> so widgets enable you 
to have uh, to, to to work with web affiliates. That's what I was talking about. So there were three different top level kinds of travel agent. I said there's a retail travel agent, trusted travel agent, and then what we call an affiliate. Now an affiliate tends to send you web traffic to your website, and when they when they come to your website, they don't have to follow a widget. We have various other tracking links that if you just want to put a regular plain link in, you can do that as well. Um, and when that traffic comes to your website, if it's if your website is built using the Tor CMS API or you're using the Tor CMS booking engine in some way, then we will track and pick up the data from that from the fact that the customer came via a certain link, and you can then choose to pay the affiliate uh, some commission later. Now affiliates obviously because they're not doing as much work as travel agents, they will get less commission. So they'll tend to get somewhere between 3 and 10%, depending on your destination average commercials, which is down to you. Of course, it's nothing to do with us. It's to do with you and how you want to work with people. But we give you all the tools so that you can work with affiliates if you wish to. And actually, they can access the API as well. So the affiliates, if you if you don't like the widgets or you want to do something slightly different to our standard widgets, then you can use the Tor CMS API, just like I've been showing you for um, these websites that I've just been demonstrating. All of these websites are built straight on the Tor CMS API, and your affiliates and your travel agents will have have that capability too. If a travel agent wants to fully cancel the booking, then they can do that. And we also support what we would call a modification request, because ultimately we believe the product is yours, and therefore um, it's down to you to decide whether or not a booking is cancelable or not. So it tends to be that um, higher volume day tours tend to be cancelable without penalty, but multi-day tours you really want the, the travel agent to communicate with you about cancellations and, 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 and let you as a member of staff deal with the issue and, and, and see if you can sell the customer something slightly different perhaps. Um, so, so yeah we do have an API for cancellations and we have an API for modification requests uh, but not modifications exactly. But as a member of staff what you do is when you're actually looking at a booking so let's just have a look at a booking. If you're looking at a booking, ding, ding, ding. So this is the booking that we literally made at the very beginning of this webinar. If I wanted to, as a member of staff, I can, I go, oh, I don't want the child on there anymore. I've just clicked remove, bang, it's, it's gone. The sale price has changed. If you look up here at the top in the middle, it's changed. It's no longer listed here. So as members of staff, yes, you've got 100% control. You can fully change any of the booking later. Uh, change the sale price, change the number of people, change whatever you want. Um, but as a, but if, but we don't let your travel agents or your customers do that, have that level of control. So what, just a little bit more about Tor CMS um, as a company. So, so we're UK based. Um, we have companies using Tor CMS in hundreds of countries all around the world, so we're, well, I, think we're, I think we're in about 90 or 100 countries now, I can't quite remember the number, um, and uh, we've got a lot of companies in Europe, America, South America, slightly less strong in Asia um, and, and, and Africa, but um, as I said, we're very strong in Europe, North America and South America, um, and we tend, to be, we tend to take on companies who are um, specialist local tour providers, that's our core focus, um, and and in particular we prefer to work with companies who run the product themselves, and the reason for that is because we've got a lot of very big travel agent relationships, and those travel agents really want to sell your tours, but they want to sell your tours if, you're, if you are the supplier, not if you are also a travel agent, because the travel agents don't want to deal with travel agents, travel agents want to deal with suppliers. Okay, um, I could show you some more detail about some of the accounting. Um, 
see what I can do very quickly. I don't really want to get into too much detail about invoicing travel agents, uh, except I'll just sort of say something quickly. If you come to Money, Sales Ledger, you can see all the individual payments that have been made on the ledger, and you can also see which bookings have got, um, which are overdue, etc. You can also quickly find travel agents who you owe commission to, and travel agents who you're owed balances from. So there are two different ways of invoicing travel agents, if you are invoicing travel agents. One, if you're multi-day, the chances are you're not selling a lot of bookings to each travel agent, so therefore you may be invoicing on a booking by booking basis. Uh, but for day tours, where an individual travel agent may be selling quite a large number of your tours on a monthly basis or a weekly basis, you might be invoicing on a group basis, i.e. Here are, here are these, here's an invoice for these 10 bookings. Um, so Tour CMS supports both of those approaches. I don't really want to go into too much detail about how you can create bills, apart from to say you can choose Tour CMS to create that bill for you, or you can create the bill in your own in a separate accounting system if you wish to, uh, but based on the numbers that Tor CMS has calculated for you. Or you can create an invoice in you know Microsoft Word or something. Up to you. Um, so there's lots of different ways of doing it. Uh, and one of the problems of uh, these kind of webinars is going into the individual detail about individual things is not always so straightforward. Uh, that's a good, but if people have got detailed questions, just uh, fire them to us at support at torcms.com and, and we'll come back to you with some better answers, or fuller answers. Well, hopefully fuller answers are better answers. Um, good, right. Um, the other thing we talk about is users. So, on an individual uh, user, on an individual basis, um, we can set up individual users, and each user can have their own permissions. Um, so, uh, the advantage of giving each individual user the permissions is you might have some members of staff who are doing accounting, some members of staff who are doing sales, some who are configuring dates and prices, and depending on depending on who you've got, we've got all these different user permissions um, to let people, um, yeah, let, you know, to give give different users different permissions. You can also lock it down if you want, so that people can only access Tor CMS from your office. Okay, so one of the other things that we didn't talk about was um, requesting payments from a customer. So we have a method where we talked a little bit about it when we did balance collection, but you can send an email from Tor CMS with a link in it. And when someone receives that email, they click on the link, they put their credit card details in, and they will be, uh, they'll, they'll be able to make a payment. And when they make a payment, then um, the data of the payment goes into Tor CMS, and of course the money goes into your uh, merchant bank account. Um, so Tor CMS can automate that process for you, which is great. And we have a, right, okay, so I've just put a link, if I'm, for the, there's, someone's asking a specific question, um, thank you Joseph, about how you can um, send emails asking for payments, and I've just actually put that link into the chat so people can read that if you'd like to. Um, <coughs> we also can take phone payments. So for example, if you were and there's two ways you can do that. So if you were on if you're on the booking screen, you come to money, you can actually if you want to just add manually the fact that you've taken a payment. So that is just a record, a record that you have taken the payment. And that might be because you've got a, a payment device that you have in your office for, for phone card transactions. Or with some payment gateways in Tor CMS, we are able 
to connect at that point and charge the customer's credit card. Um, again, it depends which payment gateway, who you bank with, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's probably a little bit outside the scope of this call. But we do have a method for integrating with payments for back office staff entered bookings or manually entering booking uh, uh, card payments. Or, as I said, you could just you could just um, record that a, a payment has been made. Um, up to you, really, as to how you how you do that. Um, we do tend to find that everyone has very different business processes, and that is one of the reasons why uh, we give you that flexibility, so that you can choose to you can choose to do it how how you wish to. Any more questions? I think if not, we're kind of coming up to the end of our hour. I don't really want to go over too much longer. <laughs>